Thanks very much, everybody. Um, it's been a great discussion on inclusion and big ideas, but um, frankly, if you're thinking about where your next meal comes from, it's a bit hard to think. And in this country, we still have very high rates of poverty. Does the panel agree that we need to continue to stimulate our economy so we avoid a long and prolonged deep recession? And if so, do you also agree that one of the smartest things we could do and the right thing to do would be to continue to have unemployment payments and payments for students above the poverty line? We can never go back to $40 a day, which is the current government policy. So we'd love your ideas on that. Thanks very much. Ray Johnson, this is essentially about the idea of snapback, the current amounts that we're paying for job seeker, as it's termed. Yeah. Do you think that needs to continue? I think it does. I think it's frankly cruel to have people expected to survive well below the poverty line. You know, people aren't on these payments forever. It is a stopgap in between jobs. So if we can't give people the dignity of being able to live... You know, I, I recall trying to get by on the single parenting payment that I had. And by the time I paid for my rent and my bills and my electricity and you know, put some food in the fridge and enough petrol in the car to get back to the shops next fortnight, I had $5 left over for my son and I. That was if, if, in case anything happened, if there were any emergencies, I needed baby Panadol, $5. You know, and some people out there today have higher living expenses than I did because I lived in a rural area where I could get cheap rent. You know, trying to find somewhere to live on you know, these kinds of payments is impossible. When you hear politicians, though, describe the payments as being uh, there uh, not to, to effectively encourage you into work, what do, how do you, and just as context, I mean, you spent, I think, the first 11 years of your life living in... in I don't really know how you describe those conditions, yeah, yeah. but uh, difficult conditions. Oh, look, you know, my, my parents have worked hard my entire life. You know, my mum works in kitchens, my dad works in construction, he's a welder, and they've done their very best to be able to provide for us. But the, the early years, we were living in a shed with an outside toilet and, you know, we it was difficult to get by and I saw them struggle and, and, and it was hard. I don't think that supporting the poorest people within our society should ever be seen as a negative thing. You know, and, and to use it as some type of punishment, as a, you know, it will incentivise you to go get work if you're not being paid enough to live. How does that ever work? You know, this negative reinforcement, it just goes against everything that we know about human psychology and we, we need to be giving people the dignity of, of being able to live. Lucy Turb. Well, my impression is I don't think anyone's expecting it to go back to the pre-job seeker welfare level. And, and I think there's just... My understanding is I'm not an expert on this or have any specific knowledge, is that there's a, a discussion about where it should be in between the pre-COVID amount, which is $40 a day, $280 a week, if I, my maths is serving me well, versus, um, you know, 550 So the, the number will probably settle somewhere in between. There is a big problem with people needing to get back into the workforce. There is, I think, an even bigger problem potentially with underemployment, ongoing underemployment, which particularly affects women, particularly affects their ability to participate in the workforce. So there is a, there is a sort of a, a big mountain of, of employment and um, uh, participation issues that we have to address in the next uh, year or two while the, the post-pandemic world sort of renormalises, if that's what you're calling it, or resets, I think is probably a better way to describe it. So we've got to we've got to appreciate and value the need for people to have dignity at the same time as them being trained and skilled to be able to participate in the workforce, if that's possible. 